It's getting cold out. I don't know about you, but I don't like losing the sensation in my fingers. So, I have invested. I say I. Someone kindly bought them for me. Because it was Christmas. And it's cold at Christmas. Some heated gloves. Because they love me. And because my comfort is important to them. Do they work? Are they worth it? Find out. Easiest way to find out is to go for a ride. So, come on. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, minus one. I'd say that was cold enough. Ooh, it's nice and frosty, isn't it? My God. So that should be a warning sign, really, not to go out today, but hey, you know, we're here. It's actually not that bad while you're moving, but heated gloves is officially minus one, or at least that's what the bike told me when I actually got to it. So I think heated gloves justified today. How would I describe them? Just as a set of gloves, they work pretty well. They're comfortable. Most important thing, I think, if you're gonna get heated gloves, I assumed wrongly that they don't need to be nearly as big. You can just stick the heating on and you're good to go. But actually, they do need to be primarily a decent pair of winter gloves, which these are. My hands feel comfortably warm or neutral. They're not really hot, not really cold. They are in the Goldilocks zone, as it were, but, how do they feel when they're on? Might as well pull over here. You know, when it's busy. So when you want to turn them on, you got to hold it down for a few seconds. There we go. There we go. Blue. It's pointless, I'm going to move that up to orange. Hey, put it on red, why not? I mean, even on the highest setting, I'm going to say that it's, uh, what sort of level of warmth would you describe that as? I'm going to say it's akin to holding a small terrier, except that the warmth is on the back of your hands, so it's almost like having a, uh, a small terrier sitting on your hands. Same sort of warmth you might feel if you yourself were sitting on your hands, unless you've got a really warm bum, in which case this is going to fall short. So whilst you can feel the heat when you're going lower speeds, if you get up to a fair clip, if you're doing motorway riding, say you're doing 70, I'd probably just describe it as a heat shield in as much as you can't really feel the temperature. It feels pretty neutral. All it's doing at that stage really is blocking out the cold rather than actively heating your hands. I would recommend them, I do like them. All I'll say is they're probably not quite as warm as I was expecting. But having looked at other brands, I still think Gerbing are the way to go. Toast to warm hands. Bye bye. So, I would consider myself an all weather rider. I will ride in practically any conditions. Some are gonna be more enjoyable than others. I wouldn't seek to go out on a rainy day or a cold day, but sometimes needs must. And if it can extend my riding season when it's a little bit crisp out, like it is at the minute really, it's actually annoyingly good out there. I should be out on my bike right now. Hmm. If it can extend my riding season to have something on my bike that is heated, then power to it. And I've always been curious about heated gloves and I wanted to check the best of them out there. So at the most recent Motorcycle Live show, I went along and checked out some heated gear. Now, there are two manufacturers that really popped up on my radar. Gerbing, I've heard of before, and Keys was a new one to me. And I'm sure they both do it just as well. They both do pretty much the same gear. They do gloves, they do heated vests, jackets, socks, trousers, I think, maybe leggings from Keys as well. Price-wise, there's not a huge amount in it. They're roughly the same sort of money. I haven't tried the Keys on the bike, so I won't comment on them, but I have bought myself some Gerbing. Why did I go with the Gerbing? Number one. They have a lifetime guarantee. That is if you buy from them, or at least it's easier to, so I'm told. So if you're looking at these and you find some pop-up on something like Sports Bike Shop, if you're in the UK, or I guess Revzilla, maybe, in the States, they, I don't know if they still come with a lifetime guarantee. Either way, it's a little bit harder to get it back to them because you'd have to go through the person you bought it from and then send it on to them. If you have a Gerbing pair of gloves that you have bought from Gerbing themselves, you can go up to them at any motorcycle show where they are set up, literally just hand them the glove and go, it's broken, and they'll give you a new one, 
or at least you know sort you out because you've got the receipt and you can prove you got it directly from them. That shows me that they've got confidence. Obviously I went for the XRL, I went for the bigger gloves, not because I wanted the gauntlet to come down past my wrist like I'm a stormtrooper, they're pretty bulky. But because it has a battery pouch where you can stick in a battery. So a lot of what I would be using it for will be journeys of under an hour. Uh, the battery pouch seemed like a decent option for me. I don't like being all tangled up in cables and having the extra faff. If it takes me longer to get the clothing on than it takes me to actually ride the distance, then, um, no, that's an encumbrance. So I went for the one with the battery pouch. That gives me some versatility because I can plug them into the bike or I can buy some batteries, which obviously I bought the three amps. I went for the biggest one because there is no point getting the smallest. Well, unless that's all your budget can allow. Basically, if you go for the three amp hour, they say on full power, which is the red on this, it will give you three hours of riding. Obviously, if I was doing a longer trip and one day's ride was three hours, I could theoretically charge it that evening, come back to them the next day. But if you're using it all in one day, you wanna know that you're gonna be able to go there and come home. Now, the reason I'm judging it by the 100% or full charge battery life is because there's almost no point in using the lower settings. Almost. There's no way of describing it. I can feel it. I can feel that it's on, and it is on the hottest setting. And the charge is full on these batteries, and I did go for the biggest battery. I mean, you can do the range at least in your head. You know that you've got an hour and a half's trip in here, and then you get back home, you've got another hour and a half back the other way. Which is why, as I alluded to before, they need to first and foremost work as winter gloves on their own merits before you start worrying about all the heated element to it. Obviously they come at a price. On Gerbing's website, it's $179.99 for the XRL, $169.99 for the XR. And the three amp hour batteries, if you are gonna go for the biggest size, I wouldn't worry too much about buying them specifically from Gerbing. You might be able to find some cheaper deals elsewhere. But from their website at the moment, they're £115.99. Personally, I wouldn't bother going for the two amp or the one amp. If it's cold enough to warrant using heated gloves, you're not gonna to wanna to put it on a lower setting. You're gonna to wanna to go for max. And if you're only getting an hour's usage out of it, well, then your journey is half an hour, isn't it? So for the gloves, and the guarantee that you get with the gloves, I would buy them direct from Gerbing. For the battery, you can source them elsewhere. But they do have to be Gerbing, or at least be able to fit this. Now, a few questions I had before I did actually buy the gloves was whether or not I could plug both gloves into one battery and therefore use one for the out trip and one for the return, just out of curiosity. It doesn't work. I don't even know if the, the power would sort of match up or, or if it would uh, even let me do that, but the cables don't marry up, so it's irrelevant. You can't plug it into just one battery. Um, I don't know whether that's true of the bigger battery. They do a 10 amp hour battery as well, which I'm assuming is for stuff like the jackets or you know bigger items of clothing. I kind of wanted to put the battery in the pocket. My concern with it being in the wrist is that, well, that's a big heavy block to be sitting on the back of your wrist. If I were to ever have an accident, that's a little bit of a concern for me. The rest of the glove, really safe in fact. I like the fact they've got the scaphoid protection on there. A lot of gloves ignore that. They have also got a windscreen wiper, visor wiper, face wiper. Uh, and they've got touchscreen as well, which is a nice addition. It's not the most accurate thing in the world, but if you need to just jab your screen and move something around, you can do that because it will at least recognize it. And then you've got knuckle protection as well. I'm sure they've done tests, obviously they're EC approved, so they must have done something with it at least to see whether that battery was a risk on the back of your wrist. And to be honest, that's how all other heated gloves do it anyway, or at least if not on the back, on the front, and it's still a big heavy block to be sitting around your bone and skin. Um, so all of them really do that, it's just something you're gonna have to come to terms with. Uh, and if you cabled in, if you were at all worried about sort of, say whiplash, or the cable, keeping you attached to the bike, don't. It comes out super easy. In fact, frustratingly so. So make sure you've got enough length if you are gonna attach it to the bike. Mm. Length. All right, on you go. I don't like this. I don't like having all these cables. And that pulls out too easily for my taste. So there's a significant chance that's gonna plug itself out anyway. Why the hell's that thing gone? Yeah. Got you. 
So, tyres, job one, job two, check how good these are. I can already tell you that I do not like plugging in the cables because it is a massive faff. But if I was going to do a bigger trip, I suppose I'd need it because the battery wouldn't last me for the whole trip. So, yeah, you're going to need to plug them in. But, and this actually does make me quite happy, they don't feel any warmer than they do with the batteries. So, that tells me that the batteries are working fine and that they are just as consistent whether you have plugged them in or you are using the lithium ion batteries. If you just lower those ramps behind you, then I can get up on there. If playing video games has taught me even one thing, it's that there's an achievement to be had for ramping that JCB. Yes, they are expensive. There's no two ways about it. Are they any better than heated grips? Well, they're kind of the opposite. Heated grips will warm your palms. These will warm the back of your hands. Heated grips will feel hotter than the gloves do, but the gloves do it across the whole surface area as opposed to just your palm which tends to neglect your fingertips and having owned heated grips they have their own complications and problems if you're going to get it factory fitted I'd say fine but if you're going to fit your own Oxfords I didn't really get on with mine I would say this is one of the more expensive ways to go but the benefit to this and especially for me really is that I change bikes relatively frequently some might say too frequently but the gloves I take with me the grips I won't. I think these are better quality. It's nice having some decent winter gloves anyway. Obviously it's slightly more expensive, but in the long run, if I was selling the bike with the heated grips on it, then I've lost the value of that and I have to buy new again. With the gloves, I get to keep them. Other possible bonuses of having them is that you look super cool and technical when you turn them on. And with the light on there as well, you look even cooler. Some might say you look like Iron Man. Yeah, what are the Avengers? <coughs> Lovely. Thank you for watching. I hope the winter is treating you well. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Comment if you want to, share it, do all of the other things that will promote this channel in this uh, seamless call to action. And I will see you in the very next video. Maybe. Possibly. If you click on it. See you soon. Bye. Ta-ra.